questions. Uh, so let's start our talk for today. First topic is documentation, discussing documentation and details as from customer point of view. Do you, uh, anyone has any comments? What's up, Max? No, I think what? I added it last to last week. Uh, it's more on uh, like a lot of questions were coming up based on documentation a few weeks before. Uh, those who were working on a few of the issues. So I just thought it would be good to know uh, if we are lacking some of these things, uh, we can start working on them and providing better documentation. Uh, just a general topic. Yes. Um, so I was also talking with. <laughs> Can't remember um, Harrison or Aaron or can't remember. And uh, the question was, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so can we introduce that topic to somebody else? And I said, yeah, sure. Um, and uh, I I was wondering um, if we can or if we should uh, restructure or structure our documentation, really like pointing out what are the things that we are doing? Uh, what are the problems we are trying to solve? How do we solve them? And then really go go by example and really sh show how how we solve these problems. I think um, Maya, Frido have created a few um, developerredhat.com articles, which are in the in the same direction, right? Like like tackling a topic and explaining the topic and, and how we solve the problem in the topic. Um, but I think it is a general good idea, um, maybe structured like the operate first people do come up with one, two personas um, that we are focusing and really talk about what problems we, we're going to solve for these personas. Is that is that is that what you're thinking when you're saying from a customer point of view? But basically, uh, we do have documentation from for us to read through and work through it. But like, do users really need them? Do re user have to go through all the documentation uh, just to understand what we are working on? That was the thought. One question is, is this potentially related to the review of, of the website and, and especially I'm thinking the documentation in the main page and the documentation and FAQ in the help section and all that stuff, is, is this related? I mean, should we look at it as a whole? Yeah, I don't know if we should restructure all the things, but um, they are kind of related. Um, if we are circling back on the, um, what was that issue tracker thingy that you created, uh, Gage? Um, if we think about um, how to involve people in our community with the ZIG structure, that, that is heading one direction. Um, taking taking the whatever the persona is, the user point of view, and really talking about the problems and how we solve that problems might be the other direction. Do we need to restructure a lot of stuff? I I don't know. Um, if I'm thinking about restructuring that, um, um, I'm. I'm Gatsby thing of operate first comes back to my mind, which is basically just remixing a bunch of markdown. Uh, or uh, again, Gage, I think you gave the example. You can even include React applications into that into that Gatsby thing. So maybe it's just a matter of remixing stuff, and maybe we just need a new entry page where we explain what 
what we are just talking about. But I I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't conduct a major um, reorganization mission. I was gonna ask, do we have a separation between like a developer documentation and a user documentation, or is it all just one? There is. Uh, there is a sludge. I'll, I'll find it, but that's that's one of the problems. And there are there are at least three different place sources of different documentation. And that's why I was asking about potential unification. Um, so that uh, should be discussed how what task can be doing out of this. Yes. Um, you, could you ask your question again? Can we create some task out of this discussion uh, so that we can create them issue, create them into issues, and work on it? Good question, right? Thanks. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, great question, uh, Hasha. I'm glad that you raised that uh, question. Um, I'd say if if we if we're gonna so we are creating a service and we are solving a bunch of problems for some people. Um, let let's take it from there. Let's let's. Uh, write up uh, what problems for which personas do we solve using what tools, right? So simple example, the data scientist person is uh, trying to manage dependencies of the Jupyter notebook the person has. Um, we have uh, Horos or Tamos, we have the uh, we have the overlay structure so that we decouple multiple notebook dependency trees from each other. We have the Git repository idea and the bots building images based on that. We have a Meteor. That could be something that we have as one flow for that one persona. It's solving a problem dependency management and keeping dependencies of your notebook up to date. Um, it's it's feeding into open data hub and roads. So that would be something. Maybe we should think about, uh, maybe we should think in this persona is conducting a journey through that universe stories and write them up. And I think there's maybe four or five-ish of these stories in general. There's a lot of uh, tooling around these stories and creating that map of journeys might be a good thing. Does that make sense? As it is user focused, obviously we're gonna push it over to gauge in the user experience dig. Bang, solved, next. Kevin, by the way, that's a wonderful example of issue magic done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can make an epic with some uh, possible user stories. I was going to ask, isn't there a document that already has some of this information filled out? Not as, I guess, fleshed out as you uh, have described it, but... Yeah, we we we, um, we have several presentations that um, Daniel or I uh, used um, a few times in different occasions. But if we have markdown stuff on, or if we have textual stuff uh, on the website, I don't know. I don't think so. That's I was saying, uh, I was yes? saying um, the, when we describe the service, 
-hmm. I think a, a couple quarters ago, we made like a service document for Thoth. And mm -hmm. I thought we had some sort of link documents in there for personas. I might be wrong, but. Yeah, um, that might even be textual representation. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Um, let's do that. Um, let's let's sharpen that service description by telling user journeys. Seems to be a good good thing. I I um, yes. So. Uh, let's push that into the Zig user experience. Let's work on that one. Um, next meeting is when? Next Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Let's meet again over there on Tuesday and see if we can uh, either reuse stuff or we're going to invent new stuff. Uh, my daily fire alarm exercise. I'm going to mute that thing. So any more topics? Uh, so any more thoughts on this? Awesome. Thanks for the discussion. Let's go to the next topic now. Uh, bot usability, bots and GitHub action usability and output improvement. See the renovate for good example. Any thoughts who added it? What can we take out of this? I just copied uh, it from the, the agenda. <laughs> yes. Uh, who put it in the agenda? Uh, good question. It, it feels very closely related to the improvement of TOS output. Um, that is from the last week, or uh, something like that. Um, maybe I have talked about it. Maybe I said it on the list. Um, uh, and I think we we talked about that earlier. Um, Maya has created an issue for that. It's the user story where we're going to say 95% of your um, software dependencies, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think I, I somehow dropped that runaway bot um, because it gives a good example of the easy of use. Um, it is it is one of these NAC bot, which is uh, updating your dependencies or which is commenting on your on your pull request. And um, it, it feels like a very nice informational view on your software stack. Um, not saying that we should copy any of these, but it feels like, like a good example of user experience. Maybe we can have a look at that one and maybe copy <laughs> a little bit of the user experience that they gave. Uh, that they have, because um, some of the Cabochet bot, um, some of the Cabochet responses are very similar, same domain as Renovate. Let's see. It's not really, really, really an actionable item, I know, but um, let's let's have a look at the Renovate thing. And. Pepe wrote, create an epic about this. Yeah, now it's an action of our item, create an issue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. Yes. Any other comments or thoughts on this one? The amount of Spinex, so I guess that's it. Uh, we'll create a big of it. Going to the third topic, ODH CME I featuring feature. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, where's my document? That's uh, just a recurring thing. Um, I think we should think about it, or I, I think I said it. Let's think about it on on yesterday's CMBI uh, meeting just to coordinate stuff. I was unsure if we have concluded on which uh, SIG is going for it. Um, yeah, 
it's just to have a recurring slot for thoughts about CNBI. I think, uh, what, what did we say last time? That um, we're going to think about uh, the continuous deployment of or, or a little bit of infrastructure for doing com continuous deployment for the feature development itself. So target is to um, collaborate and contribute to the Open Data Hub um, project, implement that CNBI, custom notebook image um, building feature, um, have a little bit of um, have a little bit of continuous deployment infrastructure so that we can test our feature and, and fiddle around with it. Uh, that continuous deployment should go to one of the OS climate clusters. Um, and it should be a very, very meteor-like experience. Um, so it should be uh, on the user side. Um, that is something that Vince uh, demoed. It is basically start from scratch. I, I want to do, or I want Open Data Hub to create a notebook image for Python 3.8. I want Boto 3 in there. I want I want uh, Pandas 1.5.8 in there. Uh, and 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 I want uh, TensorFlow. And given these uh, software requirements, the feature should generate an, an container image, which then pops up in the Jupyter Notebook launcher, which might be uh, the current solution, like the Jupyter Notebook spawner or the Kubeflow uh, notebook controller. And um, yeah, as I said, a pretty Meteor-like experience. We just built that thing, and it pops up on Open Data Hub. Um, we, we have an uh, epic for that um, to do the planning. And I think we, we said, uh, let's fork out into, into a few groups um, so that we can do a little bit more refinement on, on that uh, epic and fork out new issues to work on that uh, thing. Is it, is it? I think, yeah, Hashad, thanks for typing all that stuff. I think that resembles the current state of thinking after, after yesterday's meeting, I guess. So question for me would be, uh, what are the next steps? Um, Pep, I think you took something and said, uh, let's let's uh, refine a few of the things, right? Yes, I took the task on creating a, uh, or kickstarting the design document. I know Gage created a document about the UX side of things. Uh, I, I was going to basically evolve the, the document around the curated content sets from previous quarter. There are two parts. One is CMBI, the other one is uh, OS Climate uh, as as a user. And so basically, I'm going to take those bits as the next step for for this epic that you mentioned. Question, by the way, you mentioned um, a logistics question, you say. This is going to be a recurring topic. Do we expect, I mean, is it to be recurring in this meeting or uh, like yesterday's meeting becoming regular? Uh, um, um, I hope to push it into this meeting because okay. I, I don't want to have just another meeting for just one topic on just another time slot, but I'm, I'm, I'm open to that. Uh, why should it be part of this meeting? Because um, it feels like we have no clear assignment of a ZIG uh, for that stuff. Or it is led by ZIG DevSecOps because it is mainly pipeline stuff that we are doing here. But I'm I'm unsure about that. I, I feel uh, like uh, that's why I wrote two major components, against and DevSecOps, because I feel advisor part is also important in this. Um, it could go side by side. It doesn't have to be focused on to see in that BI. Uh, we are already doing those bits in Stack Guidance, I feel. Uh, the bit, bits which Maya is working on with backtracking would resolve the issue, which, which is in PS and MP. So those kind of things are important. I, I have to use the experiences. If we need any guidance from those front, we can take care of that. Uh -huh. Yes, and 
Yeah, exactly. You you uh, explicitly spelled out the the uh, six, and therefore it's kind of recurring in this meeting to synchronize on that one if it's not even uh, happening in the background from the point of view of this meeting in the background somewhere. Um, it's just to keep people up to date. As we record that stuff, we have a reference point for others. Like hmm, maybe later on, we're going to invite the roads UX slash UI people like Vince uh, into this meeting to talk about specifics because uh, right now the Open Data Hub uh, project is not hosting any workgroup meetings with regards to that. So we're basically not saying taking over all the structural stuff, but um, we are happy to host that. Awesome. Uh, any more thoughts, anyone? I just have an overflow thought into the Golang um, stuff topic that I just added. Um, if we are talking about a Meteor-like experience, and um, if I'm going to repeat my, my concern that implementing that CNBI feature as part of the Open Data Hub dashboard, which is mixing up a lot of front-end logic, state handling, and workflow control into the UI, Maybe we should really think about a very Meteor-like experience and create an operator for that one. Like uh, operator by operator, I mean that operator pattern, have a custom resource definition for all that stuff, have um, have a custom resource definition, have a controller um, for that resource, and really follow what um, Tom and friends did for the Meteor operator and the Meteor GUI, and really start thinking about that stuff. Um, um, that is the motivation and uh, Golang stuff. I just want to double check. Um, Kevin, you did a little bit on Golang. Is that correct? Uh, that was five thumbs up. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, think so. I, I don't have any. Uh, I'm not confident in, in my. Yeah, in my I. Golang, I I, I wouldn't quote you and I wouldn't call you out on fixing bugs in the low-level uh, Golang code, um, stuff like that. But it feels like uh, we could tackle such a topic as evolving the Meteor operator. We have uh, Tom who did most of the work uh, on that one. Uh, Max, I'm not aware if you did some Golang, for example. Uh, not really. I, I looked at some getting good on... Uh... That's I'm good enough. Like... Red marketing slides. That's good enough for us. Uh, Gregory, don't know. Don't don't say anything wrong now, yeah. right? You could just well, be considered a pro. <laughs> I have some experience a little bit for the uh, OPF CLI that was all written in Go, so I kind of picked that up. Dang, here we go. So you are our operator implementer. That's great. Thanks for volunteering that one. And um, Golang stuff. Um, Maya, there was another topic with scorecard, right? Right. Um, it would just be uh, fixing some uh, some issue, but more implementing a really small feature for the um, upstream scorecards repo, uh, the ones that compute the scorecards. So it's just about uh, they have an issue open for it. I can try to, to find it. Uh, but it would be just basically. Um, like currently, scorecards are computed for the last, latest uh, commit SHA uh, for each project repository on GitHub, um, and it will be about referring to the project uh, last release uh, or for last version instead. So, so that scorecards can be computed uh, per version instead of uh, last commit hash. So, I, I don't think it's a very big feature to implement. But maybe it's worth taking a closer look at the issue. We can try to find it. Mm -hmm. And Maya, you didn't change into a sales role, even though you're saying it, it's just one line of code and not a really huge thing. Um, it feels to me like um, if we can contribute to that um, feature on, on upstream scorecard, it might be valuable for our own work, right? And And yeah. Looking at the the issue, it really seems like a small thing. 
Let's see. Um, that is uh, the second motivation why I put the Golang stuff uh, topic on the list. Maybe um, somebody can join up with uh, Maya, who has had a look at the OSPF, OSSF, sorry, um, um, and, and implement that stuff. I don't know how complicated that is, but yes, it looks simple. Easy thing. Go for it. Um, next interesting question. <laughs> Do we need a user story for that? Do we create an issue for that and just plan it into some sprint? I don't know. Feels like we should have a kind of a proxy issue and, and plan it for ourselves. Uh, any more thoughts on this? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, good point. Um, um, maybe as an explanation, don't know if everybody got that. Um, upstream is whatever is happening in the open source world. Downstream is actually what is happening in the Red Hat product. And I think midstream is uh, the cool new term that we are using for the open source projects which are trying to support our products. Awesome. Uh, if nothing else, then I think we hit the time. Uh, thanks all for joining. And if you have more topics, please put them for the next time. Thanks. Cool. Thanks all. Bye.